Okay, so the way this works is there's a secret button down here that you press and Okay, so let me give you the basic setup uh, this morning. This is just kind of typical like my process, my uh, workflow kind of deal. So I've got my computer over here in the corner, kind of out of the way, and I'll just pull up the design I'm working on, or the project or whatever, right in Fusion, and uh, I can just pull measurements off of there while I'm still in that working design process and making the first version of it before I make plans, all that good stuff. I got a piece of board over there, it's my half inch ply. I try to just kind of work from this end of the shop to that end of the shop, you know, basic. I mean, let's just get right into it. First thing is we're gonna rip down this half inch sheet of plywood. I've got the quarter inch there. So while I've got the table saw off, I'll hit that too. Uh, we're just gonna start cutting out our pieces for our pop gear cabinet. I guess that's what I'm calling it now, pop gear cabinet. I don't know. If somebody knows what that is, let me know. I've just seen little cabinets with a lot of drawers named that. It's kind of where, I'm, kind of where I came up with that. <clears throat> anyway, let's go, let's go. Table saw, let's go. As you can see, I'm breaking down the half inch plywood. I usually try to start on the table saw with the biggest width first, so then I can just creep in down to the smallest width. It just makes things a little bit faster. And the other thing I do is I'm gonna cut everything you'll see a little bit proud. So everything is gonna be, instead of five and three quarter, it's gonna be five and seven eighths. And the smaller those pieces get, the easier it is to uh, trim them up to size. So you'll see a lot of that. And once I've cut them to width, I'll go ahead and break out the crosscut sled and cut them to length. And again, a little bit proud before I know exactly what I'll need. So my next step here, I've got the dado stack in there, and I'm going to start cutting the dados. I've got all the shelves and all the dividers cut, but this is a nice little trick for cutting dados. It might seem simple, but it's helped me out quite a bit. So we know we need seven dividers, and we want them all even. So I've marked out my measurements, and what I can do is the first one is seven and an eighth, so I'll find that. I've got my depth set already, so I don't have to worry about that. Okay, seven and an eighth, right there. So, I can run it through this side, and then if I flip it around, same exact measurement, it'll be perfectly even on the other side. And then you just move to your next divider in, run it, flip it, run it, next divider in, run it, flip it, run it. And actually I'm doing both sides of these inside dividers. So I can just flip it and then flip it over, run, flip, run, so on and so forth. And then in the end, you end up with perfectly even dividers. So we should, uh, we should start because we've got a lot of them to do. <laughs>
Okay, so while the case dries, which came out mostly square, there's, I mean, there's so many openings and stuff, I was bound to have be off by a little bit, but only about a 16th or so. I can live with that. But while the glue dries and that all sets up, I'm gonna cut out the lettering for the front of the sign and uh, I've got a CNC machine, which is really nice. If you don't have a CNC machine, this could pretty easily be done on a scroll saw or a jigsaw if you've got one of those. This is just gonna be a little more efficient, a little more accurate, mostly so I can move on to other stuff while, I, while those get cut out. So we'll throw this on there and uh, we'll meet you back with a bunch of letters cut out. And then I think the next step is going to be clad the front of this uh, case with, I ended up getting some California Redwood for uh, free. <laughs> and I think it'll look kind of cool in here. Uh, I've never worked with it before, but similar to cedar, I guess. So yeah, we'll clad the front of that and then we'll paint the case and put the back on it and just keep trudging along. So uh, enjoy the time lapse from the CNC machine. These things are really kind of cool. So as you can see, I've got the front portion here. It's already cut because we ripped everything down on the table saw to begin with. All I'm doing is taking that California Redwood, which again, I've already planed it down to a quarter inch, and I'm just cladding the front of that plywood. I'm just using glue, some pin nails, and just making a nice faux wood panel for the front. It's gonna be really durable. It's gonna have a really nice look to it. Once I've finished that, I'm going to pop the cabinet section back up onto the bench and install the back, which I've already cut. You'll see I mark all the dividers with a pencil before I start pin nailing, and that's just to make sure I don't punch through and miss any of those dividers. Glue, pin nails, same idea, installing that back, and as you can see, it's pretty square. I take a trim router and just flush up these edges to make it look pretty. And then actually I edge banded the sides of it with that quarter inch California Redwood, which I didn't show, and then hit everything with a coat of spar urethane. I'm a huge fan of that stuff. It's very durable and it's got a great look to it. I'm also mixing up some black polyurethane to paint the cabinet piece with. This stuff, again, huge fan of it. It basically just stains the wood black and leaves a nice wood textured finish. Uh, and I gotta throw a little on my driveway just to make sure that thing looks good too.
hidden electric button component. You're gonna hit that button which is hidden under the workbench and that's gonna disengage the solenoid which is gonna unlock that front panel. It drops down and you can see what's inside. I am so pumped about how this thing came out. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out the website in the description. Let me know what you think. Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, all those links are down there. Everything you should need. Stay tuned for a couple of cool shots of this cabinet, and I think you should go out there and build you one. We will see you next time. That's all for now.